Happy day two of the ultimate raw vegan bundle that is happening right now until May 12th. Thank you to everybody who's already grabbed the bundle. I hope you're enjoying all the goodies that are in there. Nate and I have contributed two brand new, never before released pieces of content to this bundle. As with everybody else, everything in this bundle is brand new. So if you've purchased bundles in the past, you don't have anything in this bundle, guaranteed, because it's all brand new stuff. Uh, we contributed Make It Raw Volume 3 that has the gnocchi and the pierogies and uh, the Swedish style meatballs, the Lebanese lemon lentil soup, uh, a lot of chickpea recipes, like there's two hummuses in there, all raw <laughs> and so delicious. And we also contributed our travel ebook, which is the Tales from the Tailgate Raw on the Road, which has over 100 recipes in there, and all the recipes have little stories to them um, so, and where we ate them and teaches how we prep and what we do, what we bring, all that kind of good stuff. So if you wanted to grab the bundle, get it from the link in my bio, or if you're watching on YouTube, link is in the description box. And if you wanted just our eBooks, you didn't want the bundle, you can always send me a direct message. Don't put it in the chat because it won't work. Uh, send me a direct message on Instagram with the word eBooks, and I'll send you a link to my store because the only link in my bio right now is for the bundle because it's the best deal possible for you to get. But today I want to chat about the hardest parts about being a raw vegan. And I'd love it if you guys can share some of yours and we can have a discussion um, and brainstorm some solutions possibly and just chat about it because it's hard being a raw vegan in this world. There's a lot of stuff that we can choose, <laughs> um, but whether we want to choose these items or not is the question, right? Um, and how challenging it can be to do that when those around us aren't eating the same way. Uh, maybe they're debating with us all the time or they're judging us or bullying us or making us feel, you know, different things and all kinds of stuff. But I want to go through uh, kind of six top reasons. And I'll start with my top reason or my top um, hard thing <laughs> on a raw diet. And I've experienced this quite a bit through my journey. And now I've been raw almost 10 years. And it's amazing. I would never go back. I don't want to. And I enjoy my food. So I'm doing this for myself. But I would say for me personally, the absolute hardest thing to do or about being raw is other people's opinions and judgments. And um, for me, the hardest judgment is people judging how I do raw and telling me that maybe, you know, I'm eating the wrong things or I shouldn't be eating that or what have you, like a lot of little things uh, that people say can, you know, make you second guess what you're doing or what have you, but I always make my choices based on the food I love, what I wanna eat, and I make choices based on my test results. So blood test results and gut microbiome test results. And those are perfectly awesome. And I'm not worried about those. So I don't need to change what I'm doing. What I'm doing is working perfectly for me and I love it, but it is challenging to go through that when other people are judging how you're eating or how even just vegan, like there's a lot of other people, other vegans who judge vegans for how they are vegan. And this is probably, like I said, the top reason that I find it challenging to do raw is the judgments from others. And feel free to, to post in the chat any other challenging things that you have when being raw and we can chat about that. So number one, others' judgments. Number two, um, confusing information. This is a challenging thing for people when they go raw um, is really hard because there's so much information online and we've got all of the access for us on our phones and we can go and we can watch other people share their things. I like how somebody said in the chat, yeah, the judging has to stop. It really does. The judging is it's just, it's just really honestly when it boils down to it it's the projection of the other person's insecurities around what you're doing or what you're eating or or what they aren't doing or eating usually that's the judgment or they feel like they need to school you on something or 
they're right, you're not. And really, honestly, we just really need to let everybody do what they want to do and not judge based on how they're doing it. If they are having struggles and need help and they ask for it, then we can share a little bit of our perspective and then they can take it or leave it. But not to say like, I told you so, or you don't need that, or that's toxic or whatever, uh, because that's not helpful. It's not helpful at all. Um, but let's talk about confusing information. There's a, so much confusing information out there. And that's one reason why we have some guidelines when it comes to the raw vegan bundle. We have low fat and all raw. That's pretty much the only two things because we, we follow the low fat, high carb way of raw. And there's other people who do raw differently and they feel it works for them. So it really, boils down to how you feel in your body and what resonates with you and what works for you. But overall, we have seen the low fat, high carb way work the best for the majority of people. Now, one of the problems with the confusing information is people put out this information based on how they're feeling and anecdotes are great and everything, but they are not blanket statements. So for example, I, I love using the cauliflower, or cauliflower broccoli example because there are people out there that say broccoli isn't human food and you should never eat it because for them, maybe they have a weakened gut microbiome and every time they eat broccoli, they get gassy or bloated or what have you because their gut isn't strong enough to digest the broccoli. So they need to in introduce it slowly, grow their microbiome, all that kind of stuff. But that doesn't mean that it's blanket statement for everybody because I eat a ton of broccoli and I digest it just fine. But I've trained my gut to enjoy eating a lot of broccoli and cruciferous vegetables. So take information with a grain of salt, even what I say with a grain of salt and research it, Try for yourself, see how it feels, and realize that people, when they share their experiences, they're only sharing their experiences. It's not a blanket statement for absolutely everyone on the planet. For example, some people have um, issues eating onions. I personally don't, but I'm not going to say that, you know, if I had issues with onions, I wouldn't say no one should eat onions because there are people out there who enjoy onions and have no issues with them. So, when there's a lot of food fear, which is another one we're gonna talk about, when there's a lot of food fear out there, it scares people away from eating certain foods that could be very helpful and beneficial to their life because somebody online has an issue with that certain food. So they're like, never eat this because it causes this for me, right? So remember that when you are learning about stuff online, that anecdotes are just anecdotes. It's great to gather information and be inspired by others, but don't always go based off um, anecdotes. Uh, people just need to do what feels right and good for them. I don't know how it's 2024 and people are still judging others' choices. Exactly, I agree, totally. Um, but again, it's a reflection of their internal um, kind of conflict with their own choices. So um, on that note, there's usually four types of people, and I've talked about this many times before. There's the inquirer, which is the person who's you know genuinely excited or, or questioning what you're doing, and you know they're pleasant to have conversations with. Then there's the other three that are more challenging, and the reason why they do the thing they are doing is it's their own way of reacting to your choice. So say you're at a restaurant with a bunch of friends and you choose the salad, you might have three different types of people that could react to your choice. Number one is the bully who bullies you and makes you feel bad or guilty or gaslights you uh, because of your choice. But they do that because they might feel bad or guilty or regretful for their choice. And so they just project that onto you. Then there's the debater who will debate everything that you say. <laughs> um, and they are doing that as a protective mechanism to protect them against, you know, their choice that they're making. They want to justify their own choice. Then they, there is the joker who makes fun of everything that you're doing or just makes jokes. And they're doing that again as a protective response to your choice. So it never has anything to do with you. It's always their insecurities, their reaction 
um, to what you're choosing and or not what they're not choosing. So maybe they ordered pizza and they see your salad and they're like, maybe I should have ordered that instead. Then they feel like they need to defend their choice. And that's why usually this comes up. So yeah, it's definitely hard. I am sleepy all the time. I can't find energy to just stay awake. What can I do? That's a really um, deep question because I don't know what your lifestyle is like. I don't know what your diet is like. I don't know um, your medical history and I'm not a doctor, so I can't diagnose or give you a, you know, a prescription cure for diet or whatever. Um, but I can say in general, usually most people can feel better when they start to eliminate processed foods. I don't know again what you eat, but eliminating processed foods and animal products and oils goes a very long way in increasing your energy levels and specifically oils, animal products and processed foods. Those are the ones that are, you know, holding us down. So oils on a vegan diet can also bring this down. Like if say you've given up the animal products, but, and the processed food, but you're still using oils that can interfere, interfere with insulin. And it can make some people feel a lot more tired usually because they have higher fat in their diet. So I, I suggest for people to try lowering their fat intake way down, eliminating the oils and increasing your fresh fruit. Number one is the fresh fruit intake and also your greens, vegetables, and sprouts. Have bigger salads, get more fuel into your body. Cause a lot of people, if they are under eating on a raw diet, they don't have enough energy to function through the day and they might feel more tired. So eating enough is really key, really, really, really key. Do you do prebiotics, pre or probiotics, or just eat for your gut? I just eat for my gut. <laughs> That's what I do. And I, when I first started testing my gut microbiome in around 2021, I wanted to make sure that I did it. I grew my gut just with food. That was my goal, experiment for myself. And I have increased my gut microbiome overall score to 96.5%, which is phenomenal. It's the highest gut microbiome score of anyone that I know that has had that score um, or the test taken. So I'm doing something right. And it's really, it's really just variety. Um, lots of vegetables, lots of different kinds of things, sprouts, microgreens, you know, plenty of fruit and eating the variety, eating larger amounts to get enough fuel in and it just grows your gut. And that is what I believe uh, got rid of my candida. I grew my gut over the years and it just fought off the candida for me. I didn't have to do anything. It was great. I love it. Usually when going raw or high raw, it's because you want to get healthy and this do things right so confusing and only takes away from relaxing into health um yeah the information can be confusing and it can you know like make you second guess stuff so just focus i believe this is just again my opinion my personal views on it is just focus on eating enough and getting enough variety in so having different recipes uh exploring other fruits and vegetables at your grocery store, having bigger salads, making bigger smoothies, having fruit for snacks, just trying to get more in. Um, the number one reason people struggle on a raw diet is not eating enough. They think they are, they might be intuitively eating or what have you, but then when we break it down and we put it all in chronometer, they're severely under eating. Most people that I coach are usually eating around 800 to 1200 calories a day and they think they're eating enough. They honestly, truly think they're eating enough. And when they see that, they realize that they really aren't. And this can cause deficiencies. This can cause low energy. This can cause people to go back to eating processed foods or animal products or just cooked food because they're just not getting enough calories in. So we need to relearn how to eat more on a raw vegan diet so that we can um, actually get enough, get enough um, fuel and calories and all that. Uh, yeah, some people have those people in their lives that just judge. Can kids eat a purely raw diet? I want them to, but I don't want them to develop deficiencies. Again, it's about variety and getting them enough calories to sustain them. Now, in the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle that you can get in the link in my bio, there are quite a few 
um, family friendly, kid friendly things in the bundle. There's like raw breads and spreads from Kate Duma. There's um, the Cravings Busters book. It's not geared towards kids, but Rennie, Happy Raw Rennie, who wrote the Cravings Buster book, they have a little baby. I, I don't know how old she is now. I'd say around three years old and that kid's raw. So, and, and, totally healthy. There's lots of people out there who are raising healthy raw vegan children, including Dr. Rick and Karen Dina. They have their son, Liam, who is also raw and they're also in the bundle. They have their powerhouse smoothies book. So go get the bundle link in my bio. Um, but they are raising a raw kid as well and he's doing great. So it really matters how you do it. If they're not eating enough, they're not eating enough variety and you aren't on top of that, then yeah, they can get deficiencies just like adults. If you're not eating enough and you're not eating enough variety, you're missing out on a lot of nutrition and calories. You can lose too much weight, you can um, feel low energy, and then you run into deficiencies, which again, causes people to go back to other foods because they're just not getting enough from their raw diet. And that's that's like their behavior with the food. So when you shift that and change it, and I mean, I've been raw for now, like I said, almost 10 years, I've really realized that that is the number one reason why people tend to go back to eating other things is that, you know, they do hard detoxes and they don't eat enough. They're not eating enough variety. And eventually they run into issues because they're just not f filling their body with all of the nutrition. So yeah, kids can be raw, but again, I definitely recommend that you learn from those who have raw children, like Dr. Rick and Karen Dina and Happy Raw Rennie. Uh, Lexi, who is also in the bundle, she has her ebook called A Raw Mama's Journey. So that's in the bundle too. And she has a little baby that she's raising, I think high raw. I'm not sure. She might be all raw as well. Um, but also Darlene Jordan, she's she just had a baby as well and she has her uh, bounce back uh, pregnancy ebook in there too so um spanish rock says you look so beautiful your skin looks so radiant thank you thank you so much um it's the raw food it's the hydration the raw food uh workouts i've been going for daily walks and that's been really really nice as well Seeing you wear flowers makes me so happy. I always want to wear mine, but my sister would make fun. Gonna start wearing them again. Yes, do it. I know. I, You know, when I was younger, I used to wear flowers like every single day. I used to work at a donut shop in Canada when I was like in like 18 to 20, 21 range. Um, actually, it's probably earlier. But anyways, I used to have like a drawer in my bedroom full of fake flowers like that I got from the craft store or whatever and I just pin it up with a bobby pin and I would wear a different flower every day at work and everyone loved it and it was really part of my life and I've kind of started to get back into that. I lost all my flowers through different moves and things through the years. So I, I want to start collecting more flowers and wear more flowers in my hair because it's just who I am. I love that. And, and getting back to who I am is, is really good. And don't worry about what other people think because, I mean, it hurts when you hear things. And I, I, I get lots of hate on social media sometimes. But, you know, in, at the end of the day, it's your life and you get to enjoy it. And most people are look at, you know, if you have a flower in your hair or if you eat differently or whatever, deep down inside, most people are like, damn, I wish I was like brave enough to wear that. And if they feel that, usually their reaction is negative because they don't feel, it's the same that we were talking about the food. They don't feel like they could, so they have to project onto you why they wouldn't. And so, yeah, just wear those flowers, wear those flowers. Thank you everyone for joining. Please go grab the bundle if you haven't yet. Um, the third thing that people have issues with on a raw diet is time and prep. So I want to share a little bit about this here. Um, we all have 24 hours and you know, you hear this all the time, right? We all have 24 hours. It's how we spend it and everything. But honestly, it's true. We do all have 24 hours and most of it we spend sleeping, <laughs> but, um, 
we have to plan our day properly in order to get the prep in. And some people say, oh, Lisa, you know, your, um, your meals take forever. Like actually got a really a negative review on, on, uh, Amazon <laughs> for the wrap book. Cause somebody said, um, the wraps, you know, they're so in depth and all this stuff they take forever to make or whatever. I don't think this person actually made one of the wraps, but the wraps don't take that long. They only take 15 minutes to make and then maybe three minutes to wrap. So they're, they're actually really easy to make, but you have to actually make them and you have to learn the process and you have to get better at chopping. And the only way we get good at stuff is by practicing. So the more often you choose a raw meal, the easier it's going to get. Every single time you do that repetition, it's going to get easier. And for Nate and I, we can easily prepare all our meals. So that's two smoothies, that's two lunches and two dinners. So six meals, we can prepare all of that in under an hour. If we are focused, not distracted, and we just do the work. So we can blend up two smoothies within five to seven minutes. And then I blend up two, a double batch of dressings. So we have two lunch dressings and blend up a double batch of dinner dressings. And we have two. And that usually takes around 15 minutes to do both of those. And then the rest of the time is chopping. So I'll chop enough for four salads and we've got food done for the day. So that's eating like smoothie for breakfast and two salads for the day, which is a typical day for us. But if we're making anything kind of like a little more extravagant or we're trying out other people's recipes, it really doesn't take that much time, but it doesn't because we've constantly practiced it. So what I like to suggest for people is to choose a day, like a Saturday or a Sunday, or if you have a day off in the middle of the week, like a Wednesday or whatever, choose that day to try the new recipes try to make the wraps, try to make, I mean, you could even make the um, tacos that Kevin has in the bundle, I'm, which I'm actually making tonight. And really when it boils down to it, it's just like blending, pouring, and then just leave it in the dehydrator for certain things like the taco shells or a burger. Like it's just blending all the ingredients in a food processor, forming them into patties and putting them in the dehydrator. It only takes maybe like 12, 15 minutes to do that. And then you have the meal ready to go at the time that you need it, but it takes planning. So planning is key, 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 most important. And somebody says raw food is faster than cooking. It is actually, we have a story about that and it's inside. I think it's inside the tales book. I think I included it, but, um, it takes us less time to make two huge giant raw vegan salads than it does for uh, my stepson's to make a box of macaroni and cheese. So it, it's actually a lot easier. But again, like I said, I want to really stress this. We've been doing this for almost a decade and we are just like, it's just so easy to do it because we've, we have the repetitions in. So don't worry if you're not there yet, just keep practicing. The more often you practice, the easier it's going to get. So let's see, do we have any, oh, just ignore the haters. You are beautiful and have a beautiful soul. Oh, thank you. So sweet. Come back to me. You get, you get it. I love it so much. Oh, customers love them. Yes. Yes. Oh, the flowers in your hair. Yeah. You wear the flowers. It's so sweet. The wraps are awesome. They are. And I've had so many people say like, they're so easy. Can zucchini or apple be subbed for onion in the wrap book? I have tried many, many, many different recipes and different combinations, and they just don't turn out the same. I do have an onion free, um, wrap recipe brand new. That's inside the tales from the tailgate wrap, uh, travel book. It's called the zucchini garden party wrap and it is zucchini based, but I had to add like a lot of different other things to it to make it more like solidified, I guess to say, cause otherwise it, it gets soggy really quick. If you don't use the onion, the onion is like so miraculous of a fiber. I just, I, that's why all, a lot of the wraps have onion in it because it's just so incredibly amazing for the wraps, for the texture, for the pliability and all that kind of stuff. So I do say like the, really the only thing that you could replace with is the zucchini, but the flavor is 
totally different. And I find them a little bit too soft for my taste. Um, but if you cannot do onions, then definitely try that. But usually most people who have sensitivities to onions find the wraps fine for them. But again, everybody's different. Everyone has different issues, but there are four onion free wraps in the wrap book. And there is one onion free wrap in the Tales from the Tailgate ebook that you can get in the bundle right now. So yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, they just don't work the same. And I've tried so many different ways to do it. And for some reason, onion is just amazing. <laughs> I'm going camping for the holiday. Do you prefer to pre-wrap or just cut up all the veggies and put them together at campsite? Great question. So you can do this two ways and we've done it two ways. Honestly, it, it comes down to what your plan is for your camping trip. You can do either or and we've done both. So usually we will wrap in advance stuff for the drive and stuff for maybe the next day. So usually two days. We've gone up to four days with pre-wrapped stuff as long as they stay away from ice. Super important to stay away from touching ice because it makes too much condensation. They got soggy and they're not as great. Just like a regular wrap, right? I mean, you just, you can't have moisture because we no no one likes a soggy wrap. So um, we will typically fill and roll for the drive and usually for the next day or for the hike the next day if we're planning that and we don't want to wrap at camp. Otherwise, if we're there for like three or four or five days, um, then we like to take the wrap with us with all our vegetables. Uh, we don't pre-chop too much stuff. We do do sometimes lettuce and other things, but we prefer to chop it at camp because then it's fresher. And we will fill the wraps before the last couple days of the trip. So for example, we went to visit my dad in um, Yellowstone last year, and we took with us pre-wrapped wraps. And we also took with us just the wrapper itself with the vegetables in our cooler. And at camp, we filled and rolled because if we would have had filled and rolled ones by day five, six, they would have been uh, like not that great just because, you know, the filling ingredients don't last that long. And once you chop it, you know, things oxidize and then they just get, and they're not as enjoyable. So we filled our wraps um, towards the end of the trip, like the last two days. And then we filled enough for us to have lunch on the drive home, which we really like to do. So if we ever do a trip like that, we always take extra unwrapped wraps with us so we can fill wraps the day before we leave. So we have lunch for the drive home. But a lot of this is discussed in our travel book. So how we prep, what we take, what we do. There's even an example weekend camping trip leaving on a Friday of like how we would prep and prepare. And then once you read through that, you kind of get a good idea of what you can do depending on when you're leaving or what have you, but it's a good kind of guide. And we take with us on that one, like wraps and tacos and burgers. So you can kind of see when we prep certain things and what we take. We also have like all the tools that we bring. There's Nate's solar power generator. There's a 90 minute video where he shows how to build the solar generator. If you were interested, that's included in there as well. Um, there's also a hundred recipes. And like I mentioned earlier, there's little stories with most of the recipes. So you can see where we ate it, what happened while we were eating it, or, you know, just like little things when we remembered that as I was adding new recipes, it was just like adding all of these things that we ate, like hiking up a mountain, um, going to see a waterfall, traveling traveling, all kinds of stuff. So this ebook is really cool and it's something that we put our hearts into. It's it's a good like storybook because you get a little more insight into our lives, the last five to six years that we've had together, um, all of it traveling and stuff. There's air travel in there. There's, um, let's see what else. There's tons of links, tons of links to all kinds of things that we like to use and all that. So go grab the bundle because that ebook is in the bundle. Link is in my bio or in the description if you're watching on YouTube. I don't mind if you leave the live to go get the bundle and then come back. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely uh, you can do either or for wrapping pre and post. It, it totally doesn't matter. It really depends on how you plan your trip because every trip is different and we want to make sure that um, that works for you. I'm just checking for any 
uh, other questions, if you guys have any other questions. How do you break down phytic acid to free the minerals and vitamins for your body if you don't cook? So that's a great question. Um, Honestly, that's why I eat a wide variety of foods. I don't rely on specific foods, for example, spinach for my iron. I eat a huge amount of other things to get iron from all kinds of other stuff, like sunflower microgreens has six milligrams of iron in one cup chopped. Like it's a huge amount of iron in sunflower microgreens. So that's one of the ways that I like to get my iron, for example. But another thing that I wanted to mention and this can go along with the confusing information part. A lot of people use absolutes online to get their point across. And that's a huge red flag to me. So when people say like, there's no vitamins or minerals if you eat certain things or you need to cook it in order to release all of the vitamins. See how I'm using like absolute words like all, none, never, have to, all these kinds of things can make somebody scared of certain foods because they think that if they don't cook it, they're not getting any vitamins or minerals, which isn't true. You are getting vitamins and minerals from it. It just might be less than if you were to eat the cooked version or something else or what have you. And every food has different absorbable rates and phytic acid has actually been shown also to help prevent cancer. So like phytates, um, lectins I believe as well. And that's why people who eat beans are some of the longest lived people on the planet and they eat bean sprouts, they eat beans cooked and they don't worry about the phytic acid in the beans. Now I sprout our beans, like I don't do red kidney, never, ever, ever do red kidney beans. Those are a no, no, never do that. Um, just in general, even people who eat cooked red kidney beans can get sick on the heme, I can't remember the name of it. It's like hemagglutin and or something. Um, but if you don't fully cook your red kidney beans, like long and at very high heats, you can still get sick from red kidney beans. So they're just kind of off the menu. Um, but lentils and chickpeas and peas and mung beans, we sprout them, which l dramatically lowers the phytic acid in them and things are more absorbable. And when it comes to things like oxalates and spinach or kale or whatever, um, it's really about eating a wide variety. So you're getting a little bit of nutrition from all the kinds of things that you're eating. So I hope that helps answer your question. And my question is just about the wrap itself, not with filling, just wanted to clarify. Um, so the wrap, we do create the wraps before we leave. So usually depending on how many days we go camping, we will make enough wraps to last us the entire trip. And we'll do that the week before we leave. Again, depends on how many you need to make, but usually we start around Wednesday night or, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday night. And we'll start making like two wraps or four wraps per night until we get the needed amount that we need for the trip. If we're going to have wraps every day or what have you, depends on the planning. But then we, on the Thursday night, say we're leaving Friday, that's when we roll what we need. And then we take the rest of the unrolled ones with us camping. Um, because we can't make wraps while we're camping. Um, we don't have enough solar power on our truck. Like we have enough solar power on our truck to run two electric coolers, our ice maker and our Vitamix and to charge all our phones and everything off the power of the sun, but we don't have enough power to run the dehydrator. We do, we, we can run it for like two hours, but it drains the whole, uh, the solar power generator like really fast. So either we have to get more solar panels or we just bring our dehydrated stuff with us. Like the burgers and tacos, we make all that stuff at home. Like the, the taco grounds and the burger patties. We all, we make that all before we even leave and we just take it with us in our cooler. So hope that helps you as well. Got the bundle yesterday. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm glad you grabbed it. And if you haven't grabbed it yet, you can do so by going to um, the link in my bio. Just click on my icon up here on Instagram. It'll take you to my page. Find the link in my bio and you can go grab the bundle. If you're watching on YouTube, link is in the description box below. Or 
If you didn't want to do all of that, you can send me a direct message with the word bundle and I'll send you a link for that as well. So if you wanted just the eBooks that we have, um, you can also send me a direct message on Instagram with the word eBooks and I'll have an automatic um, link sent to you for our eBook store with a 40% off code if you want to use that um, to get the other eBooks that are not in the bundle because the raw bundle is only new stuff. So none of our other content is in this bundle, only our brand new stuff. And that goes for everybody who has contributed to this bundle. Everything is brand new. No one has anything that's in this bundle unless you've bought the bundle, but like Make It Raw 3, the Tales from the Tailgate book, there's Chris Kendall's big banana book that's in there. Kevin Black has his new For the Love of Tacos book. Um, Lena has a book called Raffles. It's raw waffles. So there's that in there too. Oh my gosh, there's 33 different things in the bundle. So if you wanted to go check out the bundle again, link is in my bio or in the description box on YouTube. Bought the bundle yesterday. Love it. I have all your other eBooks and some paperback ones too. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Betsy. Oh, that's so kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your support and for everybody else who has supported us as well by grabbing our content. It's been so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I do sprouting on my page says rhythmic and beats. That's awesome. Sprouting is amazing. It really helped me. Thank you. Great answer. Um, you're very welcome. You're very, very welcome. Um, sending love from Charleston. Hello, hello. Let's see what you got. We don't have anything else. So I'm going to go on to the last three challenging things about um, a raw vegan diet. The number four is eating enough. <laughs> We've already talked about this a little bit, but this is probably one of the number one reasons why people have a hard time on a raw diet. They are just not eating enough. We already Again, like I said, talked about this a little bit, but most people think they're eating enough, but they are not eating enough on a raw diet because raw food is very low in calorie density. So you have to eat more of it to get enough calories. And when you start eating more, you're getting more nutrition, you're getting more hydration, you're getting more protein, you're getting more minerals, you're getting more vitamins, you're getting more when you're eating more, plus you're hitting your calorie goals. So. It's not just about calories either. I really want to start talking about this more because there's so many people who are like, just get enough calories, just get enough calories. So they're eating maybe like just bananas all day or they're eating just watermelon all day or just orange juice all day or whatever. They're just choosing like two, three, or just even one food and they're trying to just make their calories. Sadly, over time, this is not an ideal way to get enough nutrition into your body. And that's why I really, really share a lot about eating more variety in your diet, not just relying on a few foods to get your calories in because calories are one thing, but nutrition is another. And even if you're eating enough calories, you can still get deficient in stuff because you're not eating enough variety. So not only do you need to eat enough calories, but you also need to eat enough nutrition. These two go hand in hand. It's not just about calories. So I really wanted to share that. Um, number five, availability. It's challenging for some people to go raw because they just don't have the availability to them, which is totally understandable. It happens. Some areas don't have you know, as much variety and things, but honestly, it boils down to doing what you can and eating as much raw as possible for your financial situation, your location and your life. Focusing on adding more raw food is the goal. You don't have to be 100% raw unless you can and want to. I really want to share that because there's a lot of people online who say you have to be raw um, or, you know, whatever they say, their absolutes or guarantees and all these things out there. When in reality, it's mostly about replacing junk food and animal products with more raw food. And if you need to supplement your diet with say some, some boiled or steamed vegetables to compensate or like potatoes or more canned beans or something, then that's so much better then not even trying, right? Because it's not about being perfect. It's about doing the best you can in the situations that you're in. So keep that in mind as well. And then finally, food fears, which again, we talked a little bit about, but being scared of certain things raw and then avoiding making certain recipes or enjoying certain food because you love it 
can be very challenging for people who are trying to stay raw, who might be trying to be pure and perfect and then experience some deficiencies or challenges along the road because they're trying to fit into like a detox box or a purity box or a perfection box or what have you with their diet. And they, because they have all these food fears around certain ingredients. And one I'll give as a great example is apple cider vinegar. Um, a lot of people message me scared of using apple cider vinegar and I've been using it daily for 10 years. And even before then, I, I personally don't feel that there's any issues with using apple cider vinegar, but there is food fear online. So whenever they see a, a recipe with vinegar, they don't even make it. They don't even replace it with lemon juice or try to actually make the dressing. And then they default to what's convenient or easy or what have you, because they feel overwhelmed or confused, or they don't know what they could use instead or what have you. But it's really about finding what works for you and not letting the food fears get in the way of you enjoying certain foods that are going to keep you raw or enjoying certain foods that are going to help you overall, right? Like whether or not, whether or not apple cider vinegar is good or bad or what have you, I don't like using those words because I mean, we're not drinking a whole cup of apple cider vinegar. We're using like two teaspoons or a tablespoon in our dressing. It's not that big of a deal. Regardless though, if you're adding a little bit of apple cider vinegar to a dressing and you're having a huge salad full of lettuce and greens and vegetables and you have like some berries in there and sprouts and my, uh, you know, like all the stuff in the salad and you use a dressing that has a little bit of apple cider vinegar in it, then you're doing way better than maybe not or what have you. So food fears are really, really challenging and I see them so much online and it's preventing a lot of people from actually enjoying food, <laughs> which is really important. We need to enjoy our food too. And when we're scared of everything that we're eating, um, that can cause some disordered relationships with food. Uh, let's see, we've got, yes, food fears and the opposite ex too. For example, I hear so many healthy aspects of sea moss, but I don't know how the heck to incorporate it. You are in luck because in the ultimate raw vegan bundle, Daniel McKinnon has his ebook called Edible Art, and he is super creative with his recipes, and he uses Irish moss in his recipes. Now, there, you know, like with anything in life, like you can eat, you can drink too much water and get sick. You can eat too much of one food and get deficiencies. So it's not about like volume of stuff. It's about using it in appropriate amounts. And sea moss is a great option to add to your meals and eating it in appropriate amounts, about a quarter cup or so. Sorry, I got a spam call and I think it kicked me off. I hope it's still working here. Um, but anyways, uh, he uses Irish moss in his recipes. So go grab the bundle and check out his recipes and start incorporating a little bit into your day. Um, it's really, really great. So if you want to know about Irish moss, definitely check out Daniel's book in the bundle because he's pretty awesome. He's very, very creative and he does use a lot of Irish moss. So thank you. You're still live. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Melissa, you share my name. <laughs> thank you, thank you for sharing that I'm still live. That's great. You can add to smoothies. Yes, Denise, thank you for reminding me about that. Um, we actually add like a tablespoon of Irish moss gel to our smoothies, which I believe is, you know, just a little bonus help for skin and joints as well, uh, because Irish moss has all the things that your body needs to make collagen. And that's an, another interesting thing uh, with confusing information and stuff online is people will say like you need to eat collagen to, to make collagen, but collagen is a protein and a protein is an amino acid chain. And when you eat anything that is an amino acid chain, once it gets into your stomach, your body clips it up into pieces and then uses it for whatever it needs to and might not use it for collagen. So we need to make sure that we don't fall into the idea that we need to eat a specific thing to get a specific thing. It's more about variety. It's about getting all the nutrition that our bodies need to make 
um, the stuff that we need. For example, like cruciferous vegetables are very high in all the components that we need to make glutathione, which is responsible for the phase two liver detox pathways in our liver and cells. So I know there's people out there who scare people away from cruciferous because they're, they slow detox or they prevent detox or they're not human food or what have you. But without realizing that the glutathione that your body can make from cruciferous vegetables is actually part of detox. So if we want to detox, I mean, cruciferous veggies are a pretty good one to eat. <laughs> Thanks for that info. Cause I heard it's good for hair loss. Yes. Irish moss is good for healthy hair and then don't overdo it for sure. Um, yeah, just like a quarter cup ish is pretty good. And two tablespoons is probably a, a um, an average, but the most you'd want to have in a day is probably a quarter cup, give or take some days you might have more, but most days it's ideal to have like two tablespoons is pretty good. Um, does raw veg take away joint pain? It can, it took away mine. Um, that's my anecdote. I, uh, got rid of my joint pain by going raw. And I believe that it was just flooding my body with nutrition and hydration made a huge difference for me as well. So it can, it has their stories of it. So what's the difference between sea or Irish moss? They're the same thing. Um, it's just Irish moss comes from, you know, the seas around Ireland. There's Jamaican moss, there's all different kinds of moss, but usually they all have very similar profiles. So you can get either or. I have been afraid to use the Irish moss, but after reading through the Make It Raw 3, I feel more confident to try working with it now. This bundle is insanely awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. And yes, my ebook that I wrote with Chef AJ also has Irish moss recipes in it. I use Irish moss to make the Swedish style meatballs, which is in the bundle. And it's one of my absolute favorite new recipes. And I'm very, very proud of that recipe. Uh, I was very surprised when I ate it. I was like, these are so good. Um, you can get the recipe in the bundle. Just click the link click the link in my bio and make that recipe. It's so cool, especially if you use the Irish moss not blended, like not in a gel already, because when you make it for smoothies and stuff, you usually blend it into a gel and then you can just scoop it into your smoothie. But with the meatballs, you get kind of that like, like chewy texture, a little bit like little pieces if you add it to the food processor. So it kind of has um, a texture of meatballs. It's really cool. It's such a cool ingredient and it's, and it's great for us, for our joints, our skin and, and that kind of thing. Why are there so many hating on this lifestyle? The comments on posts, especially on TikTok are crazy. I know. Again, it comes down to people projecting their thoughts and their insecurities and their misinformation onto your posts. And I see a lot of memes where it's like, you know, everyone says to eat your fruits and vegetables, but then when you just eat fruits and vegetables, everyone says it's not good. <laughs> it's like, well, what is it? Then um, people, people feel like they can't do a raw diet. So then they hate on people who are, you know, it's, it's just the way, people are and and once things things go viral and you're exposed to a wide audience that doesn't even eat healthy or eat vegetables then you know it's really showing their reflection on you when they when they say their negative comments and like I said I get a lot on uh, reels that go viral and it sucks but honestly I know it's not about me it's all about them and their projections so this Swede here wants to try that recipe. Oh, I hope you love it. It's um, definitely, again, like I said, one that I'm very, very proud of. So I hope you do try it. And if you do, let me know, tag me and, and let me know how you how you like it. Uh, I hope it's it's you know as authentic because it's it's hard to do it as a raw recipe um, to get it you know as close as possible. So I, I really hope you love it. But Thank you everybody for joining this live with me. I really appreciate you all being here and I appreciate you grabbing the bundle and enjoying the recipes and making compassionate choices in your life, changing your life and all that good stuff. So I'm going to sign off because I have a lot of things to make in the kitchen. I'm going to be making cauliflower, the cauliflower Korean, the Korean 
cauliflower tacos from Kevin's Kevin Black's ebook that's in the bundle. It's called For the Love of Tacos. So I'm gonna be making those for dinner along with a little salad. I haven't decided yet exactly which salad I'm going to make, but I'm also going to have lunch, which will be the Sun Burgers from um, Miriam, I believe, Everyday Raw, who is also in the bundle. And I'm going to prep some other stuff for the next days as well on Friday, no, not Friday, Sunday. Cinco de Mayo, on Cinco de Mayo, I'm gonna be going live with Kevin Black and we're going to be eating tacos on live and chatting a little bit about how he creates his recipes because he's another really unique creator out there too. He has some really awesome recipes in his book. Um, but we're going live multiple times a day for the entire 12 days that the bundle is going. So watch my stories to learn when the lives will be. We will be live at 2 p.m. Uh, PST today, which is in about two hours from right now. We will be live and I will be showing you how I start the chickpeas to sprout and how I start and bloom the forbidden black rice. So we're gonna talk a little bit about those and the process of it and all that good stuff at 2 p.m. PST today in two hours from right now. So come and join us. We're gonna, you know, it won't be a super long live because it's pretty easy, but I do wanna talk about it and share a little bit more about that on that live. Um, here is another Swede who will try it as well. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's lots of Swedish people in here. That's so awesome. I love it. Such a fun couple weeks coming up. Yes, yes, we've got lots of lives. Like I said, everybody else is going live as well. If you wanna see all the lives that are happening, go to the bundle link is in my bio or in the description box on YouTube. And you can go to the website. At the very top of the website, there's a little tab that says 2024 live event schedule. Click on that and it'll bring up the live event schedule. You can click on the day that you wanna see what's live and it says, who's live on their platform. There's a link that you can just click on it and it'll take you to their platform, who they're going live with, uh, if there's a food demo or not, and what the topic is for the live. So you can go check that out on the website. Again, link in my bio or in the description box on YouTube. I will still be at work. Can I watch later? Yes, you can. All of my lives, as long as the internet gods allow, um, I will be downloading and putting them on YouTube, but you can also rewatch any of the lives on my Instagram feed in the Reels tab because all videos end up in the Reels tab. So you can just go there and scroll through and, and see which ones you wanna rewatch, but they'll be here. But also, as I said, as long as I can download it, I will be putting all of these lives on YouTube as well. So mwah, thank you so much, everybody. You are appreciated and loved, and I am so grateful to have you all here with me. But yes, we're gonna sign off. We're gonna get into the kitchen and I'll see you at 2 p.m.